The 1940s were known for the greatest generation who fought and won World War II. The student body at Wrights did its part to support America's efforts to win the deadliest conflict in human history. Students were drafted straight from high school to fight in a war which resulted in over 70 million fatalities. Students supported the cause by doing anything they could to help the men in battle. The Wrights community itself would make history as the 1940s were a time of war, loss, legacy, and hope for Wrights. December 7, 1941 was the day that Wright students realized they would be part of the generation who would sacrifice their lives to protect the freedom of their country. Students responded appropriately, like Donald Bransassi. It's too bad that this war has spread to America, but since it has, every loyal citizen will seize the opportunities to aid his country. War bonds and stamps were bought by students and staff, which gave the government a low interest loan. These were used by the government to help fund the war, and throughout the time America was at war, students were ready to help contribute any way necessary. According to a report from the Evansville Public Schools, quote, the students' efforts were continuous and incessant in stimulating the boys and girls to assist in the war effort by investing their dimes and dollars to help forge the sinews of war and hasten the day of victory, end quote. During this time, many assemblies were given to stress the importance and the patriotic duty for every individual participating in the war effort, along with many drives and campaigns to promote the sale of war bonds and stamps. One particular campaign was known as the Name a Bomber Contest. Wrights netted a total of $7,813 during a week of February 8th through the 12th, 1943. It was sponsored by the Columbia Scholastic Press Association. Wright's contributions to the war effort took many forms, including collecting salvage, getting students in proper physical condition to participate in the war, and even education on identifying airplanes. Students from all around the city, including Wright's, were called upon to collect scrap paper, metals, tin cans, milkweed pods, clothing, and other salvage materials, which contributed to the war effort production. As the Evansville Press stated, quote, like threatening fingers pointing skyward and warning to the axis, huge pillars of scrap were mounting higher and higher Wednesday on the lot in the back of the post office. They were the rags, the rubber, and the metal contributions Evansville was making to the scrap harvest to supply the government with war materials for which there is a desperate need, end quote. The material found in milkweed pods could be converted into an excellent filler for life preservers. The school children from all around Vandenberg County provided material to make 5,000 life-saving units. Students from Wrights and other Vandenberg County schools also helped to create scale models for aircraft identification, which were used for technical information concerning aviation, and students were prepared vocationally in hopes of providing future mechanics. Before the shocking attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, Wrights experienced a tragedy the previous year. On November 3, 1940, the morning after the bossy football game, five football players, Raymond Gooch, Jack December, Bob Lutz, Harden Boyd, and Harry Mortis Jr. made their way to the Ohio River bottoms for a day of hunting crows and hiking. In the afternoon, the players decided to attempt to cross the river. When a wave capsized their boat, Ray Gooch swam against the vigorous current of the Ohio River. When Gooch reached the shore, he ran to Bob Lutz's home, and with the help of Lutz's father, they made their way back to the Ohio with a rescue boat. When they arrived at the capsized boat, they were able to rescue three of the boys still gripping the capsized boat. But sadly, Harry Mortis was unable to maintain his grip and was swept under by the current of the Ohio and drowned. Later, Ray Gooch would receive a medal for his bravery in the heroic rescue of his teammates. The death of Harry Mortis was a horrific tragedy, not only for the Wrights community, but for the entire city. Sports teams, such as football and track, were kings at this time. The Wrights football team would win the 1940 and 1948 state championship. The team also recorded three undefeated seasons in 1940, 46, and 48, and won five city championships in 40, 45, 47, 48, and 49. The track team appeared seven times at the state track meet during the 1940s. From 1946 to 49, the team won the city, sectional and regional championship every year. In 1946, Bill Rommel was a state champion in the 440-yard run. 
1949, the team finished fifth at state, and senior Malcolm Cook won state in the 440-yard run. During this decade, the basketball team found a new head coach. Tom Rhea resigned from the coaching position in 1946. He was succeeded by Clarence Riggs. Riggs had coached at Centennial Elementary School as well as Central and Bossy High Schools before he landed the job at Wrights. The football team went through three different coaches during this decade. Elmer W. Weber, who had led the Panthers since 1925, left after the 1940 season. Ralph Becker replaced Weber, but only stayed for one year. And then in 1942, Herman Byers replaced Becker and coached the team for 27 years. Herman Byers would start a legacy in the late 1940s. He would win 189 games at Wrights, 14 city championships and 13 SIAC championships and six state titles. The football field would be named in honor of Byers in 2013. Along with the many different coaching changes, staff members would come and go throughout the years. The principal, M. L. Plum, gave his letter of resignation to the school board in 1947. Plum ended a 40-year career as teacher and principal. Former vice principal, Neil V. Pierce, would succeed Plum as the new principal at Wrights. In the world of music, Hugo Schusler was the first band director in the history of Wrights High School and built the program through the early years. He left Wrights after 1924 to begin a career in banking. He turned to teaching in 1933. Along with fellow instrumental music teachers Paul Yoder and Claude Smith, Schusler began a coordinated instrumental teaching program in the public schools. This transformed the instrumental music program and made the Evansville Public Schools a leader in the state. On November 24, 1945, the Evansville Courier reported that Schusler was being transferred to Wheeler and Delaware Elementary, where he would then retire. It was at this time that the next great band director arrived at Wrights. Harry Hart previously directed the Central High School Band since 1943. During the 1940s, the Wrights Bowl became an outdoor venue for not just Wrights events, but also for the Evansville community. Beginning in the late 1930s, the Bowl hosted an annual circus. On August 18, 1940, 700 people attended the circus in the Bowl. The phenomenal acts would wow the crowds. Early in the war, during the summer of 1942, Evansville's first blackout drill was held in the Bowl. The program Bombs Over Evansville drew an audience of 7,000 people. Sound effects were played to simulate the bombing of Meade Johnson's terminal and Evansville shipyards. Wrights was actually a violator of the procedure as two of the hallways were brightly lit. The Evansville police chief personally stood on a trash can to unscrew the lights in the hallways. While the bowl always has been home to the Wrights Panthers, in the 1940s and 50s, it also hosted college football games. From 1948 to 1956, Wrights hosted the Refrigerator Bowl, and Evansville's own Purple Aces would appear in two of the games. In 1948, the Purple Aces beat the Missouri Valley Vikings in the first Refrigerator Bowl game by a score of 13-7. Then, in 1949, the Purple Aces won again, defeating the Hillsdale Chargers 22-7. Wrights was home to many popular events in the bowl, city and state titles were won, students would dedicate their high school careers to the war to protect our country. This generation would not only change rights, but also the entire country. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.